Welcome, everybody. It's a great pleasure to introduce um, our speaker, Gabriela Tarantello from Roma Torbegata. She wishes, wishes to acknowledge the help of Sorrentino in the production of this video. I do think it's not Paolo Sorrentino in this case, but Alfonso Sorrentino. The title of her talk is On a Donaldson Functional for CMC Immersions of Surfaces into Hyperbolic Three Manifolds. Please. Morning. So what I would like to discuss in these lectures uh, is a parameterization for the moduli space of CMC immersions of surfaces into hyperbolic three spaces, namely three manifold with sectional curvature minus one. Okay, so uh, for our trial, as this talk is concerned, we shall let S to be a closed orientable surface of genes G degree equal to 2, and I will denote by Tg of S, the Tachymuda space relative to the surface S, namely, this is the space of conformal structures. that we can define on, the, on S. Uh, in fact, it's a space of classes of conformal, class, uh, conformal structure, modulo a relations that uh, identify conformal structures up to biolomorphism, which are in the same homotopy class of the identity. And therefore, if I pick an element in the Tachymuda space, I can think of X as a Riemann surface, namely a Riemann surface with a compatible holomorphic and symplectic, symplectic structure. So, uh, as I said, and, uh, we want to try to parameterize all possible immersions of uh, uh, constant mean curvature of S into a carbonic space. And uh, this was a program actually initiated by Uhlenbeck in uh, 1982. Uh, and we, we, we observed that you can actually carry out this program because, at least locally, you can identify such a CMC immersions just by solving a set of equations, which are the so-called gauss kodatz equation, which now I'm going to describe. And what I mean is that any time that you have a gauss kodatz equation, the gauss kodatz equation actually uh, relate the pullback metric from the immersion, I call it G, pullback metric, uh, coming from the immersion with the second fundamental form. Okay. Second fundamental form of the immersion. And uh, so let me describe a little bit what these gauss codats are. And uh, any time that you have a solution, namely you have a pullback candidate, pullback metric, uh, and a candidate second fundamental form, um, namely a solution, as I said, of the gauss codats equation, at least locally you can construct an immersion of this Riemann surface into a hyperbolic tree space. All right, so uh, as I said, let us now see try to describe this gauss kodatz equation, and I will start with the kodatz equation, because it's a sort of cauchy riemann equation, and the kodatz equation. And in order to do so, let me introduce a local holomorphic coordinates. So this is a truly local argument, holomorphic coordinates on x, on my Riemann surface x. Then according to this coordinate, the pullback metric g will have the form of lambda conformal factor dz dz bar. And let me remind you that lambda, the conformal factor, is a function of z z bar, always positive, defined on the on x. Then if you try to write down, so let's write down now the second fundamental form is a quadratic 
form, so we'll have the following expression, alpha dz squared. And then I have a second term, so now let me say I should fix the constant. So if we call c, two out of the top, c will be the mean curvature, which is prescribed of your CMC inversion. And in fact, I, I use this constant here, so I have c lambda dz dz bar. And due to the symmetry, then I will have the term alpha bar dz bar squared. So this is the shape of the second fundamental form. And what Kodatsi says, Kodatsi says, is the, notice that alpha identify the second fundamental form. And in fact, if you have a CMC immersion with constant C, then this alpha is automorphic. That's what Kodatsi, Kodatsi says. This is the expression, the local expression of Kodatsi equation. That is to say that the 2, 0 part of the second fundamental form, which is this part, is something that locally is like an holomorphic, holomorphic function for dz squared. And therefore, you see the 2, let me write here Kodatsi, what we get out of this observation is Kodatsi is telling us that the 2, 0 part of the second fundamental form, the second fundamental form, is actually a holomorphic quadratic differential. A homomorphic quadratic differential is exactly geometrical quantity that has this local expression. So the second fundamental form is equal to alpha, where alpha is an element of the space C2 of x, where C2 of x is exactly the space of holomorphic quadratic. Uh, another way of saying this is that uh, C2 of x is in fact the space of uh, holomorphic sec sections of x into kx tensor kx. And here kx is just the canonical bundle of the surface. Which for the uh, a Riemann, a Riemann surface, namely for a complex surface of uh, dimension 1, coincides exactly with the dual of the holomorphic uh, tangent space. Okay? So T1, 0, x is the holomorphic tangent space of the surface. Holomorphic tangent space. And for uh, make notation short, I will always denote this space by E in the following. OK, so what is useful, I will just write it here, this information. What, you, what is useful, uh, useful information that you have to keep in mind is that the space of holomorphic uh, quadratic differential is finite dimension. In fact, from here, we know that it is a subspace. I want to use another color. We can think of it as a subspace of, let's take a color which is grammatically different. So this is contained in the one zero forms valued in E star, okay? according to our notation. One zero forms valued in the canonical bundle, like C2. So let me just summarize this information here, which will be useful in the sequel. This is a subspace of the one zero forms of x value in star. It's a finite dimensional space, and in fact, we know that the complex dimension is a linear space, obviously, and this complex dimension is just 3 times g minus 1. I remind you that g is the uh, uh, genus of the surface. Moreover, as well known, uh, once that we have a metric on x, it induces a Hermitian product on the tangent and uh, cotangent bundle of the surface. So we get that we have sort of Hermitian structure in, according to my notation on the, 
on the holomorphic line bundle E, I remind you that this is the holomorphic tangent uh, space of X, and uh, also in this star. And therefore, once that you have such uh, Hermitian structure, namely we have here defined a well-defined Hermitian product, then for all sections, you see, if alpha is an element of A10, so it's a 10 form valued in star, so this is what is the space, so it's the 10 forms valued in star. So we have a sort of a fiberwise emission product uh, defined for such a form, and so we have correspondingly a fiberwise norm of alpha, which I put in subscript G because uh, norm on, on uh, any alpha which belongs in one zero, not only in holomorphic ones, it is a, there is a well-defined fiberwise norm coming from the fiberwise um, emission product uh, induced by the one on E any star. Okay, so we have a norm for such elements here. That's something that we want to keep in mind. So we just record this here together with information that we have for C2. That's not only for C2, but for all the 1, 0 uh, 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 forms valued in the star, we have a norm now which depends on the metric G, which is our unknown, as a matter of fact. We are looking for such a, for such a metric. This is what defined, that just to say. By the way, since I am here, it is worthwhile also uh, mentioning that I can also define, and this is a space which we'll enter in a second, uh, we can also define a fiberwise norm for A01 forms valued in E. The, what I'm writing here, as we will see, is just the dual of the A10 forms in E star. So those, this is the space of the 01 forms valued in E. Yeah, so for every beta in this space, also we have a fiberwise norm for uh, which depends on G. This also we shall, uh, we shall use it. Okay, so now I have written here what is uh, Kodatsi equation. So let me just uh, after the notation that I've introduced the Kodatsi equation it just is stated this way. So let me discuss now the Gauss equation. So this is one part of my information, what is the, the Godazzi equation. So now let us describe the Gauss equation. So the Gauss equation is in fact a compatibility condition between extrinsic and intrinsic uh, information, in particular between intrinsic curvature of X equipped with the pullback metric G, and this usually it is denoted by KG. And what we want is that this coincide with the extrinsic curvature. And this curvature is just the curvature of the ambient space. So as I mentioned at the beginning, we are dealing with uh, immersion into hyperbolic spaces, namely to spaces with sectional curvature minus one, so the ambient curvature is minus one, plus the contributes that comes from the second fundamental form, which is the determinant with respect to the matrix G of the second fundamental form. Okay? So now if we account for what we know, we know that the second, the two zero part of my second fundamental form according to Kodatsi, write it down here again. According to Godazzi as to be a morphic quadratic differential, then actually we can compute the determinant. I have already observed for you that the two zero part of the second fundamental form identifies completely the second fundamental form. And in fact what we find is that make some by the way well known computation is that once that you know that I have this information then this is equal to minus 1 plus c squared. I remind you that c is the mean curvature of the constant mean curvature inversion. And then here is plus 4 
the norm of alpha square g. Okay. So those are my gauss codatz equation. So let me write it down. Kg equals to minus 1 plus, so I'll keep this information, uh, I keep this version, c squared plus 4 norm of alpha squared g. So in principle, those are the equations that you want to solve for g. So what is the unknown, unknown here is g. Okay. You want to find, in certain sense, a holomorphic quadratic differentiable, which in principle depends on the metric and the metric at the same time. So our unknown in this formulation are g and r. Okay. So how do you proceed? Well, uh, if you want to bring a bit of analysis in, in, in this study, then what we do, we introduce a background metric. So, the, and this is also a well-known fact, once that we have a Riemann surface, then by the uniformization theorem, the uniformization theorem tells us, so uniformization implies that there exists a unique hyperbolic metric on X, and this hyperbolic metric are we denoted by G of X, and this will be our background metric. So whatever quantity I compute, say the norm, the uh, volume form, I don't put any subindices when they refer to the background metric. But then if you use g of x as a background metric, then you know that the metric g has to be conformal to this, to be in the same conformal class of the hyperbolic metric. And therefore you know that our g, the g that we are looking for, has to be of the form e to the 2u, u the conformal factor, g of x. Okay? It is usual to put a 2 because it makes the computation sort of simplifies some constants which otherwise have to carry on in, in, the, in the analysis. So now, what has become an unknown is this function u. This is a smooth function on x. Okay? And what you find is once that you have set your g of this form, you can just explicitly write what is your intrinsic curvature, and the intrinsic curvature will be e to the minus to u, well-known fact, minus Laplacian of u, this is Laplace based value operator according to the pullback metric g of x, so plus the curvature of, the, of this metric, which is hyperbolic, so the curvature is minus 1. So we have written, explicitly written with the use of the background metric g of x, this term, and now we want that this is equal to minus 1 plus c squared plus 4 alpha squared g. But you want to write, of course, everything in the metric, the background metric, and for this purpose you recall that once that you have picked up the metric g in this way, then the, the, the norm, the Faber-Weiss norm with respect to g, it varies in this way. It's e to the minus 4u, the norm of alpha squared, but now with respect to the metric g of x. Okay? So I can replace this term here. So and now I have an equation which only involves the background. Everything is written according to the background metric. So this is alpha squared. Okay? So we have managed to write the Gauss equation as an elliptic PD, very familiar, an elliptic PD of Newman type. And so I will write it over here. So we have that what we want, that minus Laplacian of u is equal to 1 plus e to the 2u. So I just multiply. And here I have, actually, for convenience, let me introduce this parameter. The parameter is t equal to 1 minus c squared, so that I can group this term. So here I have actually a minus now with this notation, t plus e to the minus for u. I have a 4, which I shouldn't forget, alpha squared. 
because it plays an important role. And the four yeah, is due to the, the fact that when we use the D bar operator, we get this one half, the D of D bar operator, we get one half, and that's the four. Okay, so this is now Gauss equation. All right, now we want to solve it. We want to solve this system. Now, written in this way, so this is the system that I want to solve. This is Gauss equation. Now, written in this way, sort of this, once, once that you look at it, how the Gauss Kodatz equation, uh, you know, up to the, 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 the information that we got so far, you see that you are somewhat uh, uh, pushed to, in order to get a solution, uh, you are sort of pushed to go in this direction, to argue as follows. So you want to say that, uh, well, suppose now that I fix alpha, because I have another way to find this quadratic, holomorphic quadratic differential. So I fix alpha, so if you want first approach, when you fix alpha, okay, as a quadratic, holomorphic quadratic differential, and so by fixing alpha, we are fixing actually the second formula. That's what you are doing. You fix alpha and then you try to solve Gauss. So once the alpha is fixed, you see the alpha will appear here according to the background, the, the norm of the background matrix. So everything is given and is known. So try to solve Gauss equation. Okay, see this was proposition also in the program of Mullenbeck sheet supposed to do that. But what you realize that actually this is not good. It's too rigid the problem. Because so let me say if you had a success, what means being successful in this approach? It just means that try to solve the Gauss Kodatz equation, then get a unique solution. Okay? So if you get a unique solution, this will allow us to conclude that then to the pair x alpha, notice that the pair x alpha is in x is in the type Euler space, comma C2 of x. But associated to this pair, there, there is, we can associate uniquely a CMC C inversion. And so we have our parametrization. Okay? Because if the solution was unique, any pair of data allows us to identify a unique CMC C immersion. And in this way, what we have done actually, if you just think of it, we have just parametrized, this gives us a parametrization or describes, barring the alpha in this way, this is just describes the tangent bundle, oh, sorry, cotangent bundle, cotangent bundle of the tachyon space. Okay? Those pairs, varying x and alpha in this way, just is describing the cotangent bundle of the tachyon space. In fact, I remind you that uh, the, the tachyon space, I just say quickly in words, the tachyon space has a structure of a, a manifold of differential, differential cell of real dimension 6, G minus 1, G being the hyperbolic metric, and you see the fiber is a C2, which as I mentioned before, this is a complex space of complex dimension 3, G minus 1. Namely, it's a linear space of a real dimension 6, G minus 1. So this is, you, you think of it as a cotangent. But unfortunately, this is not good, in the sense that you have non-existence, this was already sort of uh, uh, already understood by Ullenbeck in the old paper. I remind you that all this started, I have written it already, in the old paper in 1983. So sort of she guessed that you might have non-existence issue. But not only that, we have also, when there is existence, then no unique. So you really bad shape. Okay? And 
uh, actually, in a paper, I think it's a 2000 recent paper, we have described all this non-uniqueness result and so on, so let me just mention for the, uh, also to acknowledge the, the, the work with my collaborators, so this is paper that we did with Wong, Lucia, and myself, I think it appeared in 2020. And when we describe exactly the most, in case when non-existence happens and this non-uniqueness phenomena as it occurs, and so on and so forth. So this is really bad start. It's not the way that you want to do it. So somehow you have to look at things a little bit differently. And this again was an idea of Uhlenbeck with uh, a student now, many years later. So the approach is to sort of give a dual interpretation to the Kodatsi equation. So, and, and now I'm referring, I write it here, to a paper of Gonsalves, student of, uh, at the time, going back, uh, of 2007. So uh, what they propose is to say, well, it is clear what we understood so far that by it is too much to fix the second fundamental form. What does Kodatsi say? is that uh, the, the, the second fundamental form and the matrix should vary at the same time, and, and of course, in an appropriate way. So in order to understand how this works, what you can do about it, is just, I go back to here, actually this famous form that we put it at the beginning here, so is to look at this quantity here, because this, you see, you have together information about the metric and the uh, holomorphic quadratic differential. So what is the true quantity, the ones that you really have to identify, actually is not u, is not alpha separately, but what you want to identify here is this, is what it comes when really you read out from your equation. Simply, so as I said, if you bring into the norm into the norm, this term here. So what is the natural quantity that you have to analyze? Is the quantity e to the minus 2u times alpha. That's what appears in the equation. It seems to be sort of natural quantity. As I said, there is the interplay between information second fundamental form and the matrix. Now, uh, observe that why alpha you want it to be holomorphic quadratic. Now this is no longer holomorphic, so what you know about this term, you only know that this is now a 1, 0, 4 value in this term. Okay. And uh, actually, as I said, we must take a dual uh, point of view because what we do, we are going to, uh, since we have introduced the metric, we are going to use the Hodge star operator Hodge star with respect to the background metric, which provides us with the isometry between the 0, 1 form valued on E okay, to the space of 1, 0, 4 minus 4. Please keep in mind that my E here is T, uh, is the holomorphic tangent space of X. Okay, so those are Beltrami differentials. And there is a diseomorphism, actually, an isometry. That uh, brings the space A01XE in its dual, which is exactly that. So I can view this object as the dual of beta with a beta now, Beltrami uh, differential. But of course, I have to narrow this space because here you see alpha lives in a finite dimensional space, being an holomorphic quadratic, and beta, if like this, I mean it's too big because it's just. A Bertrami differential. And also, what I keep and you know, to be guided in the, in the right direction, we know how, we know what is the dual of the space of holomorphic quadratic differential. So, let me just make this remark because this will guide us in the right direction is that, in fact, the space of holomorphic quadratic differential is the dual of the 0, 1, that group. I just define it in the okay. 
So you see this, since we have taken a dual approach, so, so this is what we should base our, you know, the, the, the way that we want to proceed. So what is H01 of Xc is just, as I said, is the 0, 01 the both homology group. is to say you just take the space of the Trabi differential differentials it on D, and you mod out the quotient with the image of the bar operator of the smooth section of E. So A0 of E, the space A0 are just smooth sections of E. Okay? So the elements of in H01, the elements here are classes. Okay, and on the my classes beta are formed, at least I should move it. So my classes beta here, those are formed by beta plus divided by eta or given eta in A0 of but each of those class, according to that book of decomposition, has a unique harmonic representative. So there exists unique beta node, harmonic, again, with respect to the background metric G of X. Now everything is formulated with respect to the, the background metric G of X. A unique harmonic Bertrami differential which belongs to the given class beta. That is to say that for any beta uh, uh, Bertrami differential, the beta can be decomposed as this well-known fact as harmonic term plus the bar beta. Okay? And in fact, and in fact, the uh, the star operator that I define is this. Now I we identify and I saw more fits. So the, the map the, uh, that goes from H, the star operator, when you restrict it into H01 uh, Xc to the classes, actually, the star operator gives you, again, an isometry isomorphism into the space of holomorphic quadratic differentials. Okay? And what is the holomorphic quadratic differential? It's just the star of a beta naught, where beta naught is the harmonic representative of beta. Okay? So beta naught is the unique harmonic representative of the class. And therefore, you see now that once, since I still I have to identify this term, this now I can write it as star beta naught plus d bar eta. Okay. So what is my unknown? My unknowns now are so since beta naught, the harmonic representative, is sort of dual on the harmonic uh, holomorphic quadratic differential. So you see now I can think of to fix beta naught. So because it's just I am fixing in the dual class a, a holomorphic quadratic differential. So the question is now fix beta naught. That is to say fix a conformal uh, uh, class on the uh, notebook homology group. And now you ask yourself, at least you hope strongly, if for fixed beta naught, can we solve the Gauss equation for this fixed beta naught with this under this notation? What does it mean? This means, can we find, let me summarize here, a unique solution for, okay. So we started alpha is this. So this means that. Uh, alpha is related to this. 
and then our discussion. So which means that alpha is then equal to e to the 2u, beta naught plus d by beta, okay? And we know that alpha is holomorphic quadratic differential. So now I can write the Kodatsi equation by asking that d bar of e to the 2u star of beta naught plus d bar beta is equal to zero. So the alpha that I comes from this term has to give me an allomorphic differential. And then I can replace now into the equation this term here from here, okay, using the isometry, the norm of this, according to the background metric, is the same as the norm of this. The star is an isometry, and then this is the norm of this, square square. So I can write here the Gauss equation, which now becomes minus Laplace mu, uh, as I wrote it over here, is 1 minus t e to the 2u minus 4 e to the 2u beta naught plus d by eta squared. That is now the problem. So, we, through this dual approach, we fix, of course, always we have fixed our conformal structure in the type universe space. So we fix conformal structure. If this a class the Tombow cohomology group, can we find now a solution, in fact, a unique solution of this problem? star. So the question is, does it exist the unique solution of star? Uh, also, perhaps let me remind you that the parameter t is linked to the main constant, your constant, and is given by 1 minus c squared, huh? the parameter t that appears here. So does this admit a unique solution? And what is important here so, this is the question, because if the answer is yes, then we have our parameterization. So, parameterization of the modular space of CMC motions. C, the constant C is in the equation, as I said, through the value of T. So we have the parameterization of the CMC inversion by pairs X beta, which is now an element of the vacuum space, cross uh, H10 of X C. And this describes now, since this is the dual of this is T2, so this is describing now the tangent uh, bundle of the particular space. So if we attain this result, we have a parameterization according to the dungeon bundle of the particular space. So let's have the cycle. And indeed, the answer is yes. And uh, what helps in proving such existence and uniqueness result is that the star there, the problem star actually has a variational formulation. So this was the crucial observation in the paper of Gonsalves and Ullenbeck, because there is a Lagrangian, I call it a DT, of u eta, whose critical points are exactly the solution of, of star. So whose critical points are solve star. Huh? And the function you can write it as the integral of x, gradient of u squared, over 4, minus u. It's very, not very, t equal to u. And then plus uh, e to the 2 u beta naught plus z bar beta square. Okay? This is everything in the background metric. So this is the functional whose critical points are solution of this, the problem. 
And uh, uh, Gonsalve Surenberg referred to this functional as the Donaldson functional. Okay. Donaldson Lagrange. Because, this I will say very briefly for lack of time, actually the system star, you can write it equivalently as self dual equation for itching. Uh, uh, Eaching, in the itching program, self dual equation in itching problem, and therefore, there the Lagrangian of the self dual equations uh, is uh, given by Donaldson function. Well, what we were able to prove, this was also suggested by the work of Gonsalves and Ullenbeck, what we proved again with uh, Wong, Lucia, and myself, it's a very recent result that just appeared in the International Mathematical search notes, we prove that indeed d of t, actually for t bigger than zero, d of t admits a unique string on it, corresponding to global mean. And therefore, for any t bigger than zero, that is to say, for any uh, c that is 1 minus c squared, if the constant c is with the norm of c is smaller than 1, then indeed we have a parametrization of c and c, c inversion in terms of the tangent bundle. So that's what we prove. So then you ask, okay, but this only concerns c smaller than 1. So what can you say if instead your constant is bigger or equal than 1? And for time constraint here, let me just focus to the case c equal to 1, okay, case mod c equal to 1, or more specifically to c and c one inversion. Can we find, for an assigned pair x beta, can we find similarly a c and c one inversion? Notice that the, 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 the situation here is much more complicated, also because uh, in view of the uh, some results of Brian on one CMC one immersions on the hyperbolic tree space, uh, such manifold have hands. So in a compact setting like what we are considering here, we have uh, uh, such such a one immersion develop singularities. Okay, and uh, in fact. Uh, Actually, we have a result about this. In the case, one immersion, regular result, uh, which now we just mentioned in the case g equal to 2. And when we prove that, so first of all, we realize that we have to take a beta different from 0, our class. And in fact, let me denote by beta p to be its uh, projective representative in the projective space of uh, the Dolbo group, okay? And what we prove that indeed there exists, let me remind you also that we need just that one bit, not a bit of information, that is to say that, remind me, uh, to remind you that we can always define the covariant that goes from x into the projective space of h 0, 1, x e, which is projective of dimension pg minus 2. So it's just uh, p2 in case g is equal to 2, that is that we are considering here. We got the map is an holomorphic map. And in fact, this image, this is all consequence of the riemann rock theorem. This is a complex curve in P2. So the recent result I conclude with this that we have very recently, just I want to state it, is this. And I conclude with it. So the theorem. <coughs> that if my, the projective representative of my class P is not in the image of this, of the co map, then, in fact, 
exists uh, CMC, one regular emotion corresponding to the pair XB. But there is a lot that one should describe in this context. I don't have time, so this is just to give a flavor of the more recent results in this direction. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Gabriela, for this beautiful talk. Um, thank you all for attending. Please address any questions you may have to Professor Tarantella, Tarantella directly by email. Thank you so much.